about this show is that we get to gather so much information for you just so you can get to learn and check out some new things welcome to the most happening kids and teens show this is q club Woo! we are back once again and i'm very much excited to stand before you guys and to give you nothing but the very best in case you're watching us for the very first time simply visit our facebook page that is q club zambia and let's get texting let's get interacting and let's just love each other guys we have so much unpacked for you today all you have to do is stay glued sit back and relax and yeah whatever you're gonna do at that particular time i don't know but just make sure that you concentrate because we'll be discovering some new stuff right here on Q Club. In case you're celebrating your big day today, happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear! Happy birthday to you! A happy birthday to you! Woo! I'm sure your cake awaits somewhere. But also, I know for a fact that people have definitely opened schools. Congratulations, you're back to school once again. <laughs> school is cool. I mean, putting your books aside for some time just to cool off your brain or to chill for a bit is amazing as well. But just don't chill 90% of the time and study 10% of the time. Just chill maybe 10% of the time. Study do other stuff like reading the bible and help out with some chores as well then you're gonna be a good kid because we promote good kids right here on q club let's get straight into our first segment for today and today we'll be going to the zoo we're going to the zoo we're going to the zoo today we're going to be learning about an amazing animal named the otter that's o-t-t-e-r an otter what does an otter look like well, it looks a little bit like a man. Let me not lie, but let's get our facts right today. The otter is a small mammal that lives both in water and on land. There are 13 known species of otter that inhabit areas all around the world. The otter mainly eats aquatic animals such as plankton and fish but the otter also hunts small amphibians birds and occasionally small mammals the sea otters from north america have been tracked journeying as far as southern japan the sea otter has also been known to grow to more than one meter long otters have a thick coat of fur which enables the otter to be warm in near freezing waters. There is also a series of thin hairs under the otter's fur that helps to trap air and keep warm. The female otter tends to give birth to a few curbs in early spring in barrows in the river banks. This is where the baby otters are looked after until they are between 4 and 10 months old and ready to fend for themselves. The otter has four strong feet that are webbed to allow otter to swim through the water with ease. The otter has five toes on each of their four feet that gives the otter the strength to swim in the water on the stability when climbing up muddy river banks. On each of the toes of the otter, there are sharp strong claws which add to the strength and performance of their feet both in water and on land. The back feet of the otter are generally slightly bigger and more flipper-like than the front feet of the otter which helps to propel the other along the water. The otter makes the most of its front and back feet by moving its front feet together and its back feet together which enables the otter to swim smoothly and quietly through the water. The otter is a fantastic fisher and is able to catch nearly all of its food in its sharp teeth at the front of the mouth of the otter. An adult otter 
has 32 teeth, including four sharp canine teeth that are found in the front of the mouth of an otter and are used for holding onto and biting their prey. The molar teeth in the mouth of the otter are flat, on top and slightly rounded as they are designed to crush the food of the otter rather than to chew it. The teeth of the otter are built to eat animals with snails such as crabs and snails so the teeth of the otter are white and flat. Some species of the otter do in fact have purple teeth rather than white teeth which is caused by these otters eating purple and colored sea urchins. Well, I almost slept, but <laughs> that's a very interesting animal. And of course, when you're talking about an otter, um, I don't know what they call um, the family name. Is it Lutrina or something? But it's a very interesting animal that you can also just get to see. Yeah, I don't know if we have them around, but they usually feed on fish just like us and other things as well that are found in the rivers or the seas out there so as we get to move on with our show do not forget that you can actually participate and be part of this family by simply visiting our facebook page q club zambia so there's q and then there's club and then there's zambia let's get to find out what exactly you guys are up to and what we are up to as well let's get to exchange ideas and be part of this great thing called q club now one thing i know for sure is that the weather is changing drastically if you are a person who is um, a fan of the cold season Unfortunately, the cold season has finally come to an end and this is the time that you get to start preparing for the hot season, which is the summer. Now, what you need to know about the summer is that the summer is not so friendly. With the cold season, you can get to control it, you wear like jerseys and everything, you keep warm, but the summer okay before the summer there's that dust period that comes in and then there's dust especially in you know a lot of areas but immediately after the dust goes off there is that summer now the hot season where we can't even <laughs> breathe properly because it's too hot and sometimes you can't control the heat you try as much as possible to bath even six times you try to put a fan you sleep with your fan on but the thing is that when you're walking in the sun and it hits you, that's when you will know. When you know, you know. <laughs> so make sure you put that umbrella on the sides because at least it protects you from the heat, especially if you walk from home to school or you walk from church to, to home or from home to church with whichever visiting your friends, make sure you get an extra umbrella or you can either use sunscreen because it protects you from the heat from the sun and just because after summer we go straight into the rainy season and so it's great so you can preserve that umbrella for a later date you can't just throw it away and so speaking of uh, discovering new things let's get to see what we have for you on our translation for today what words are we learning are you actually applying those words in your daily lives those sentences that we teach you here it's actually very important it also keeps you you know intact when it comes to your la local language and your culture as well because you get to learn something that is from home and it's just locally you know made and everything else let's get to have a look at our translations for today Enya pick it up hello 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 how are you doing it's time for translations you know what to do get a pen paper pencil a plain paper it doesn't matter as long as you have somewhere to write so let's not waste time because our bimba proverbs are waiting for us we have been looking at these exciting bimba proverbs bimba proverbs are really nice i never used to know that they're nice but coming to know them i think it's really nice to know proverbs they can be in any other language they can be in um english yeah in english do we have proverbs in english i don't know do we have proverbs in english i think i'll have to research but i'm sure we have proverbs in english or maybe riddles i know riddles yes i've heard of riddles i've heard of metaphors uh i don't know 
Okay, so we have a lot of proverbs. We have them in English. Like I said, I don't know. I have mine in English, maybe. We have them in Bemba. We have them in Chinyanja. We have them in Lozi. We have them in Kikaonde. We have them in a lot of languages, but we are, we've been just focusing on the Bemba proverbs and we've come to learn a lot of proverbs. Me, myself, knowing proverbs, like it's really awesome knowing Bemba proverbs. I always feel nice. I'm like, I tell my sisters a lot of things. I tell, okay, it's just been, I've been telling people a lot of things when it comes to proverbs. I've been able to say a lot of things. <laughs> I've been able to come up with a lot whenever I say something and people are like, what do you mean oh what are you talking about i'm like this is a proverb it means this and that so i always get an opportunity to tell someone <laughs> something about the proverbs which we've been learning so i hope also you you're quite familiar with the proverbs we've been doing because it's really exciting to know proverbs then people just go like what do you mean then you just tell them like no this means this and that they get to learn more things from you so let's not waste time by talking 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 we might forget what we want to talk about today what we're about to look at we have five exciting bemba proverbs let's get started with proverb number one for today which is what is the translation the translation in english is a little arm follows another a little arm follows another what is the meaning of this proverb well the meaning of this proverb is a person gets help from those he helps a person gets help from those he helps like it's straightforward how do you expect help from people you don't help <laughs> they can't help you it's true what if okay it's always like for example at school there are those people you'll be always giving your food then there are those people you don't give food i'm sure you do not expect those people to give you food when you do not have it because you don't help them when they don't have food so you expect those people you've been giving your things to help you so that's how it works so a person should be able to help a lot of people. I think you should extend an open arm to help people. Okay, we now move up. We now move on to proverb number two. Proverb number two is as follows: Umwana kasebe, ngakaku koma wavula wakoveka. So umwana kasebe, ngakaku koma wavula wakoveka. What is the translation? The translation is as follows. A child is like an ox. When it cuts you, you still pick it up. So a child is like an ox. When it cuts you, you pick it up. So umwana kaseve. Ngaka kukoma wabula wakoveka. What is the meaning? Well, the meaning is that a parent does not forsake his child, even if the child offends him greatly. It's true. A parent will never forsake a child. Even if the child offends the parent really greatly, that will never happen. A child will never forsake, like a parent will never forsake um, his child. So, meaning parents will never forsake their children. Whatever a child might do, a parent will always find that space in their heart like to forgive the child okay so we now move on to proverb number three proverb number three is as follows what is the translation so the translation is that a dog belonging to a harsh master does not become wise a dog which belongs to a harsh master does not become wise Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering what does this mean okay so the meaning is that in position of strict or extreme discipline counterproductive this one applies to parents most of the times because you see like the proverb says Imbayam Kali Tai Chinjala meaning a dog belonging to a harsh master does not become wise parents at times they might think that when it comes to disciplining us the children they have to be harsh so that we can obey their rules but it's not always like that because 
The Bible even ex uh, the Bible even tells parents that they should not be exasperating their children, meaning they should not be irritating us children. So it seems our parents can think that harsh treatment to us will work, but in actual sense, they're not making us happy. You know, our hearts we're like, why do they do this to us as people? <laughs> so parents, they don't really have to like take a harsh treatment when it comes to us whenever they are trying to like discipline us but rather they're supposed to be loving all the time through that way we'll be able to do whatever they say as long as it's for our own benefit <laughs> okay so our next proverb is umwana shumfwa amenene mwefu kwikoshi umwana shumfwa amenene mwefu umwefu kumkoshi what is the translation? The translation is that a child who does not listen grew a beard at the back of the head. So a child that does not listen grew a beard at the back of the head. What is the meaning? It means that a person who does not follow other people's advice runs into trouble. So a person who does not follow other people's advice runs into trouble. How true is it? But it's really true because we know that advice may come from different people. At times it may come from a person who is younger than us. At times it may come from a person who is like almost our age. At times it may even come from a person who is more older than us. Even from our parents, even from our grandparents, even from our friends, 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 friends. So a person who does not listen to, uh, to advice runs into trouble in case you have something you tell you ask a person for advice they say oh no you go on this issue in this and that way then you are like oh, it doesn't really make sense so <laughs> let me go my own way what is going to happen what is going to happen is that you may run into trouble because you've taken a step which is not supposed to be taken so listening to people's advice most of the times works you're supposed to listen to advice from everywhere but not advice which will not benefit you. There's some advice which people give you, then you know this is wrong advice. Then there's that advice which people will give you like, okay, yes, this advice makes sense. Let me do this. So let's listen to wise advice because we do not have to listen to each and every advice. Some people will not give us good advice. So we have to be quite t attentive when it comes to listening to advice. Okay, so our last proverb for today is Infula Pakoya Epo Yona Vula Ifisavo. Infula Pakoya Epo Yona Vula Ifisavo. Meaning rain destroys rain destroys a lot of crops at its departure. Rains destroy a lot of crops at its at its departure, meaning some people become difficult or even destructive when they're about to leave a place. <laughs> ah, some people become difficult, even destructive when they are about to leave a place. Maybe it might happen to me when they say, "Get off that camera, girl! You are done with your translation." So I'm like, "No, I'm not going anywhere." I still have some more things to do, but in actual sense, I do not have anything to do. So it happens to most of the people. So I hope you have learned one, two, three, or four more things from our today's translations. I myself, I have learned that I have to listen to people's advice, but only good advice, not advice which is harmful to us, actually. So we have to be quite attentive when it comes to that. And also, I've learned that our parents will never forsake us. So I hope you've enjoyed our today's Bimba Proverbs because me myself have learned a lot of things. Hope you there at home, you've also learned something from our today's Proverbs. So from me and here is that, please, Stay safe. I love you. And please join us next time as we come with more, 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 more Bimba Proverbs. Thank you so much, Ania, for that. Now it is time to have fun. And let's check out our kids' blog today and see what we can play around with. Now give me your roses are red and violets are blue poems like can you do that let me give you some hints or some of the ones that i brought okay so i had to share this with somebody because i had great fun reciting them and saving up for special occasions yeah right you can also do that and the famous roses are red and violets a blue poem has been altered and twisted and the results are actually amazing okay so let's see this first one that says roses are red and violets are blue 
I was born beautiful. What happened to you? <laughs> okay, so this one says roses are red, violets are blue. When brains were given out, where were you? That rhymes, right? Roses are red, violets are blue. Roses are red, violets are blue. Orchids are expensive, wood and dahlions do. <laughs> and this other one says, Roses are red, violets are blue. I can row a boat, can you? See? The roses have wilted, the violets are dead. Sugar is lumpy, and so is your head. And finally, Roses are red, violets are blue. Most rhymes rhyme, but this doesn't. <laughs> so those are the ones that I came up with. In case you have the best roses are red, violets are blue, you can come to me and tell me about them and let's do a competition, you and I, one on one. And let's see how far we can go with roses are red, violets are blue. Okay? All right, so we move on with our show today and it is time for some good good discoveries and so we continue learning about our periodic table and this time let's get to learn about carbon obviously the first thing that you um that comes to your mind rather when you hear carbon is carbon dioxide yeah so it's actually involved at some point let's get to learn more about carbon carbon plays a huge role in the world we live in from the carbon dioxide in the air to the graphite in your pencil, you will find its imprint everywhere. The carbon atom, carbon properties, hydrocarbons, carbon structure, carbon fiber, carbon monoxide, your carbon footprint, and other amazing carbon facts. Let's get started. Carbon is a chemical element with the symbol C and atomic number 6. The word carbon comes from the Latin word carbo, which means core. Carbon forms a large number of compounds more than any other element because of its willingness to bond with other non-metallic elements. It is often referred to as the building block of life. While carbon forms many different compounds, it is a relatively unreactive element. There are several allotropes, which means different forms of carbon, with the three most well-known being amorphous carbon, core, soot, ETC, diamond and graphite. The properties of diamond and graphite are very different with diamond being transparent and very hard while graphite is black soft enough to write on paper. Graphite is used for its thermal insulation properties. It is also a very good conductor of electricity. The carbon atoms in graphite are bonded in flat hexagonal lattices and layered in sheets. Carbon is the fourth most common element in the universe, after hydrogen, helium and oxygen. It is the 15th most common element in the Earth's crust, while it is the second most common element in the human body, behind oxygen. Carbon has the highest melting point of all elements around 3,500 degrees Celsius. Hydrocarbons are organic compounds made entirely of molecules featuring just hydrogen and carbon. Organic chemistry involves the study of hydrocarbons. The simplest hydrocarbon compound is methane, which is CH4. Carbon was discovered by early human civilizations in the form of charcoal and soot. The term carbon footprint refers to the amount of greenhouse gas emissions caused by a country, organization, or individual person. The carbon cycle is the process in which carbon is exchanged between all parts of Earth and its living organisms. 
it is of vital importance to life on Earth. Allowing carbon to be continuously reused and recycled. Carbon is found in the Earth's atmosphere in form of carbon dioxide. Although it only makes up a small percentage of the atmosphere, it plays an important role, including being used by plants during photosynthesis. Carbon monoxide, which is CO, is very toxic to both humans and animals. It forms in conditions when there is not enough oxygen in form of carbon dioxide. In many countries around the world, carbon monoxide poisoning is the most common kind of fatal poisoning. Carbon fiber is a strong material that consists of thin fibers made up largely of carbon atoms which are bonded together in microscopic crystals. It is very useful for applications needing high strength and low weight. Carbon fiber is a strong material that consists of thin fibers made up largely of carbon atoms which are bonded together in microscopic crystals. It is very useful for applications needing high strength and low weight. Fossil fuels such as methane gas and crude oil plays a large role in modern economies. Plastics are made from carbon polymers. Carbon is used to form alloys with iron, such as carbon steel. Graphite and clay are combined to make lead used in pencils. And lastly, charcoal is commonly used for grilling food on barbecues. So today we're going to be learning about an interesting country and this is a country called Malta. Now I don't know if most of you have heard about this country because it's not usually spoken about and it's a very very small country so let's get to find out and see what exactly Malta looks like and what people do. Now off the coast of Italy in the Mediterranean Sea there lies three small islands that make up the country of Malta. Malta and Gozo are the two main islands and Cormino is a smaller island. So people have lived here for thousands and thousands of years. There are underground dungeons and rooms, churches and amphitheaters built by the Romans. So this island is rocky and the soil is very, very poor. But the country has been a strong shipping region for centuries. Boats traveling between Africa and Europe literally stop here. Now Malta attracts many tourists who come for its sunny beaches and architecture and culture as well. So some more fun facts about this great country is that um, Valletta is the capital city of Malta and the country has about 124 square miles of land. 400,000 people live here. Only 400,000. And when you look at us in Zambia, we're like millions and millions of people. Now, the people speak Maltese and English, and 98% of people are Christian, mostly Catholic. And Malta has a multi-party democracy, and Malta has its own money as well, the Lira money. And 87% of adults can read, take that. And also, people can expect to live for 78 years in Malta. So I might have used um, some strong words that you guys feel like need to be translated for you to understand. Now I use the words called dungeon. Now dungeon is a place to hold prisoners and uh, amphitheater is a large open area for concerts or games and the region means area and also um, architecture simply means buildings. So that is a great country of Malta somewhere in Italy in the islands. So I think we need to get, you know, to get to know more discoveries on countries that are not really famous because you know that there are certain countries that have countries inside them. Like South Africa has Lesotho. Like most people think Lesotho is such a big country somewhere, but it's actually somewhere in South Africa, but it's its own country as well. So those are some of the countries that we'll be looking at this particular coming um 
you know month on q club but then we move on and it's time for story time Hi guys and welcome to story time with me Bridget. I'm so excited to tell you our today's story, but I just want to tell you about our last story we talked about. Ya Karulu na hipo. Karulu sanga ende kumanzi shifuka anapusi da hipo. So hipo na muza tidi aja kabula pa manzi Karulu ni shikuwa sila tamudi yao imuntu. Hale konekea. Dasa ya Karulu sama enda kumanzi. Dasa mamona chabia ima garden, 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 garden. Ehe, that's the reason why. So, listen to our today's story. But it's also about Karulu even if. Ehe, nya. Pari Karulu, ehe. Panari, panari, tiritonzi. Panari Karulu. Panari na balayoni, vanjoka, vazibra, vajirafu. Vantuari bwa, bari five. Na wena nguwena ngumani ya mabamu mwamene muja mforest. Babo wa wawu za wakina tinifuna mpite mchigade nichi. Muka chiseura iti chigade nichi. Muza wina, muza nkala pampando. Sinifu sinifu nifuna uchoka pampando. Ah, balayo ni kumvela so wakondwe. Wakalulu na wewe kukondwe le ratu. Babayi ka manja chayamba chicharenji. Manja moze waveze mgade ni muja. Moze inda. Hmm, hmm. Mwosa ganzi ya sisi zanga, isi gade ni simunga mpezike inda umu. Mwa clean sisi mwanga. But mweze inda, zezo ruma. Mweze nzimu. Mweze na vijo vikulu. Vijo vya mvima waneka monga ni vitu nyelele. Vijo vikulu vya vima ruma maningi. Ehe, ande vya mimo ziweze limo mamini muja. Vajirafu wangena. Vamboenda, vamboenda, mboseula, 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 mboseula. Vavalu mavima nzimu. Vaa, wakangi, wawachokamu. Balayo ni manginamu. Vamboseula, mboseula, mboseula, mboseula. Hii ndaza wakwela. Kaya vahi balayo ni manausako. So, hii ndaza wakwela. Kunyaula, wakango kuseula, bulobuino. Kunyaula, balayo ni kunyaula. Haa, wachokamu. Haa, wabandanya, wazibra, wabwilamu. Kuseula, kuseula, chabu, chabalu, machija. Chamene chikulo, chija, chinyelele. Chamechi maruma, chija. Kuvaluma, kuvaluma, wachokamu. Wakalulu, wangena. Ati bantu wanga mulipo, bantu wayanga tetilipo. Bantu wanga tili mulipo, watetilimu. Kayamba kuseula, kuseula, kuseula. Mko chenja ya kamundu waka mbiani, bani kana chita. Kuseula, 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 kalumiwa. Kulumiwa, kamfalaka kangena, mkevi kachokamu, kaindo pumula. Bantu swezo ona. Kaseula, 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 kamfalaka kina kevi kalumiwa maningi. Kuchokamu, amaila ke wangena mwakaluru. Kuseula, 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 na wewe varumiwa, wachokamu. Wadadzi wake wangenamu. Kuseo wapaka wakazenu wake wangenamu. Na sista wakazenu wake wangenamu. Na brother wakazenu wake wangenamu. Nemo ni wana sili zira. Kabuka choka chepa lasi ni shika sili za. Kuchenjeles. Na kashimi kape ya nemo ni wana mpasia na mpando. Karu nemo ni wana kaya na kin. So you guys, what have you learned from today's story? As for me, I've learned that you should always, always know how to play your games at school. If your friends are making noise. I don't advise you to make noise with them, but no, you should also have that kind of thing of when it's school time, it's school time, don't play around with your friends, always take school seriously. You know how Kalulu did these things, he invited the family over to help him out. Family is always important, count your family in, make your family happy, you should always count them because they'll always help you at the end of the day, just like Kalulu did. So, that's the end of today's story for me, Bridget. Bye-bye. so much Brigitte for that amazing story and you know when you're having so much fun time seems to move really really fast but do not despair because I will be back again next week right here yes honey with me you're gonna be with me again next week same time same place well I need to remind you that if we go and you don't see me <laughs> then just know that I have gone to Malta because I need to go there. The island is beautiful, guys. I have seen it on pictures. And, well, only 400,000 people live there. I'm going to be like the 400,001 person in addition to that. How about that? Yes, but it's amazing also to get to know new places. But before you decide to fly over, make sure you get to know your country as well and some of the things that we have, some great um, natural resources, some great things that you need to see, 
you know the the falls that we have it's not only the victoria falls but we have the kalamo falls we have a lot of things that you can get to see and mbala is a beautiful place but anyways you see for yourselves one day when you get to travel but anyways that's all we had for you today on q club thank you so much my darlings for watching i will be back again next time and remember to stay glued right here it is dstv 278 and go tv channel 90 for me it's goodbye and adios